welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Lotus Electra, the all-electric SUV that I've been very keen to get in the garage because this is such a different proposition from Lotus. How does it live with the legacy of the Elan I've got over there and the Amira there, the new age sports car? All electric, huge battery on it, huge car. Look at the size of this thing. We've been discussing with Charlie, who's holding the camera, what is its rival? And I think it's a sort of design statement. That's what the Lotus DNA offers it. It is a very modern design and, as I say, over five metres long. But does it work as an electric car? And does it work as a family SUV as well? So I've lived with it for a week so far. Let's go and have a closer look and see what this Lotus Electra is all about. There are three versions of the Electra available. The Electra, which is this one, an Electra S and the Electra R, the high performance one. And I was looking at the horsepower of the ultimate version. This is crazy powerful. 904 horsepower, they rate it as, and it has some other technical changes. It's got a two-speed gearbox in the rear to really give it some punch off the line. But I'm keen on looking at the base one because actually, in this mad world, I think it's reasonably priced. The price of a base one on the road, £90,805. That compares to the price of a Mira V6 today of £89,755. So it's £1,000 more to get this size of car over a Mira. This particular one, with a few extras on it on the road, £96,144. So, what do you get with it and how do you tell the difference? Well, the design of them is very similar on the outside. It's very hard to tell which model it actually is. You can get carbon brakes on your R, so you might see that, but basically they look the same. And it's just the size of it. They've had to upscale the Lotus badge so it all sort of fits. We, Charlie and I actually went to the launch, the world premiere of this car in London, and it was quite a thing. Now you'll see this car doing things. I have the key on me. And as we walk around it, it was always saying, oh, so I open the car, so I put the lights on and things. I have no control over it about taking a key and banishing it. I'm afraid it will do this every now and then. But yeah, down in London, there was quite an event where this appeared and the engineers were so excited because you've got to imagine if you've done Lotus sports cars all the time and then you get to do a completely fresh model. We don't get very many fresh brand new cars from Lotus but oh my goodness this Electra was one of them. You'll see these sort of vents down here doing things. These seal up as you can see now or they open up if they actually need to feed air to the radiator there. And the reason these are shaped like this is they're actually like a Lotus flower. That's the idea there. And the other thing to learn is they're the daylight running lights and then your headlights are actually down here, this slot here. These are just on all the time when the headlights go on, it's down there. And there's this porous design as they term it. There's all sorts of holes in it that actually when you walk around the car, then you see they actually open up into the wheel well and the wheel well vents out of there. There is a, a little boot under there. We'll look at that in a moment, but come on round and there you go. <laughs> it's not me. I don't know what it, I think it's opening up and now the doors come out. So you see it's like Land Rover. They have the flush handles and they come out when they, you know, you've opened the car. Also on this car, you'll notice it has the camera rear view mirrors here, the wing mirrors. That is an option on this car. It's a drag reduction sort of package, £3,999 and a rear spoiler and these. When we get to the driving, we're not sure these are a good idea. Uh, this car is on 22-inch wheels. They seem to be a no-cost option. There is a 20-inch aero wheel available as well. There it goes again. Monster brakes. I think they're, they're 412 mil brakes on it. Huge canopers. And I say there is actually a carbon option on it as well. And it's festooned with cameras. So we've got cameras there, we've got cameras there, we've got a camera here. And then it's got this light bulb, this crazy system of level four. Um, autonomous driving is actually on this car. There's a little one that pops up there on the roof as well that makes it look like a London taxi. 
this car, they, they haven't got it signed off to, for use in the UK, so they're not actually operational at the moment, but it'd be a over-the-air software update and they'll go live as soon as Lotus get the permissions to use it. Um, inside, now is it going to actually let me in now I want to get in? Probably not, so I'm going to press the key again. There we go. Great big door. You'll notice a bit of mud on this car. Ah. December in the UK has been horribly wet and muddy in our part of the world. But yeah, I like the way this door seals right down the bottom again and you step in it, and obviously the battery pack is underneath. So it's, you sit relatively high and you can see how it's, yeah, there's no real sill on it because it's all battery. Um, one thing about this car is worth noting, there's so much space in the back. If you want a quick look at that, this is a five seater option. There is also a sort of executive four-seater option, but then the boot gets its own bulkhead and you, it, doesn't, it shrinks down the actual boot capacity of it. Huge thing. This car's also got roof rails on it. They're an option and you can get the pano roof and things. This hasn't got it. But everywhere I look, I can see a tar down there. I can see another scoop round there and I'll come all the way around the back. Well, there's great big holes here that go right down to the wheel. I can see the tread of the tyres there. Um, rear spoiler here that operates, does things. You hear it whirring as you come to a stop. Uh, no wiper on the rear screen. These funny little winglets here and more of that libel detection craziness and cameras all sitting up there. I think I can open the boot from here. Yes, I can. Big boot. I mean, it's Range Rover S, this car. If I look at the size of it, it is 5.103 metres long and a Range Rover is 5.052. So it is bigger than a Range Rover overall in length and it's almost got as big a boot. I think, I'm not sure what's down here. Yeah, a little thing, yeah, not very much space in there, a little hideaway back there. We've actually put the, that is meant to live in the front, but it's a bit of a tight fit, the cable, charging cable, seats fold down, all very practical. And this light bar that actually flashes green when you're charging it. Just have a quick look at that boot up the front. I think for the size of car, and you actually open this up. This is quite fun. It says, Pioneers since 1948. And under there is a little boot there, 46 litres. Little tiny boot up the front. So not huge at all. So there you go. There's a brief walk around this Electra. Let's take it outside, take it for a drive. I have to say, in here is one of the highlights of the Electra. It just feels so modern, so different to anything that we've ever seen from Lotus before. As ever, you get the iPad, huge um, screen here, but you also get, I've got a, a, a readout here, that little dash here, and also the passenger gets information as well, and heads up is standard on this car as well. I ought to just show you that actually. I think there's a Tesla-like um, card, or you have this, what they term the pebble. So this is the, the lozenge that is the key for this car. My dear wife absolutely hates this. She says, well, how am I going to hang the sort of house key off it or something like that? It is his own very beautiful thing. And if you press the middle, you lock the car if you want, or it locks as you move away. Actually, on this particular car, I can't get it to do that. It's very odd. You get in, it's all live and go. I can put it into drive straight away. There's no sort of on-off button when you step inside. It's just live when you get in. Also, you've still got heater controls on little switches like that, which is nice. You can go into a screen and do heating in more detail, but it's quite nice that you actually have a heater control and left and right there. I can put heated seats on, heated wheel, all sorts. I mean, there is so much information on this and yeah, they talk about how much lag there is in it. It seems all right, so I'm, I've got a 154, whoops, 154 mile range, 49% of battery. We're going to discuss a lot about the range with this car. And I can go to here, and these are my last journeys. So far, I've done 574 miles in this car, 
average um, consumption is 49.9 kilowatt hours per 100. Trip two sort of resets itself. We've done 20 miles so far today, that sort of thing. So anyway, that, that the screen, I, I'm not gonna delve right into it. Oddly, at the moment, there's no CarPlay on it, but that is a UK thing. It's all to do with a license that's required to be able to use Android CarPlay, and it isn't quite on the electric, but they hope that will be in in January. Uh, yeah, buttons on here. Yeah, I've got obviously control windows. What's interesting is actually if you sit in the back, the window controls you can do left and right win rear windows depending which side you're sitting. It doesn't matter. You get two switches, which I've not seen before. Little detail and a proper Lotus wheel, very shaped. And you think you've got paddles, but the left hand one controls regen and how much regen you have. And then I've got drive mode controlled by the one on the right. Normal columns, look at that, does wipers and it does indicators on a column. Who would have thought? Um, a charge point for your phone here. Um, these peculiar sort of cup holder things that you press down, they do lock down and you press a button here and they come back up. Uh, so yeah, charging phone there and a very deep center console in there. Space oddments, massive shelf underneath here and the door pockets are huge as well. Have I got a glove box? I don't know actually. I haven't looked, I don't think I have. But I've got loads of space in the back. Yeah, it's a child seat in the back. My grandson has been doing his school run in this most days. Um, a lot of space, quite a nice screen there. I can see further charge points there. Yeah, it's just huge. I think that's the interior. Into drive, head out, normal size, little tug on there. You set off in tour. Yeah, all good. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now, disappear off, go find some better roads. Just before we get going here, I, one thing I should have done before I left home was just show you on here how you have to deactivate the sort of lane assist and the um, speed limit warning. This is a 2024 car. This is something that's gone all cars from July 24. So mainly all 24 cars will already have it. You have to press safety, uh, drive assist on what off, Yes, I can still close. Automatic speed limit alarm. I'm gonna put that off as well, off. And there you go. So there's six buttons you have to press to be able to turn all of that off. I left it on actually, I was in London yesterday driving there and back and it was quite useful then, but around here, I just find it gets completely overwhelmed. It just can't cope with sort of country B roads and avoiding puddles and it gets itself in a bit of a knot. It's not a crazy loud alarm, but it's not something I really need. And speed recognition, I don't think they seem to pick up all the speed limits correctly. You quite often see yourself traveling in a speed limit and it's displayed wrongly and you're getting a constant ching 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 because you're not doing the speed limit the car thinks you should be doing but you are actually doing the correct speed limit um, that's something we're gonna have to live with i'm afraid for all 2024 cars in the uk and away we go <sighs> silence it, it's not super aggressive this car i've got it in tour that is how it sets off every time uh, you get into the car we'll go through the other ones once we're the other side of uh, burford but um yeah you have a sport setting an individual i think there's even an off-road version uh, setting as well but no i'm not doing any of that it's just too muddy around the fields at the moment i have measured the noise in here and it's good it's just on 70 decibels at, on my noisy bit of road at 60 miles an hour which is very quiet the thing i noticed with this car is your great visibility out the back but it's a little bit tight at the rear and therefore you're quite reliant on the mirrors and especially so being such a big car it's very wide it's actually wider than a new range rover and I want to get on with these mirrors, but I cannot get on with these camera mirrors. I don't, you don't see distance very well. And I find at night there's this glare that comes from headlights behind. You can't see, it's just whited out. 
and this has got very strong regen on it and when you just come off the accelerator you see this load of red if you've got sort of verges beside you all lit up in red they're not a good idea i'm going to squirt it up the hill and see what it does that oh oh a little bit of wheel spin and we're off Hi. 605 horsepower it means you don't press the layout pedal very long and wallop it does get a move on but you do it's been great actually having this car when it's a little bit damp around well we've had miserable weather at points we've got reasonable dry roads today and you do notice a little bit of scrabble from the tires the 315 section at the back 275 at the front but even they struggle to deliver the horsepower and torque this car produces 710 newton meters and if you imagine what the r is like i think they do a, a special p0 trofeo tire for that dedicated tire and it probably needs it with 900 and something horsepower part of the thing is obviously weight and I did weigh this car. Uh, they say it's 2,490 kilos, absolute minimum. I weighed it 2,560 kilos. So a bit over what they state, but it's on 22 inch wheels and it's probably got one or two extras that weigh extra. But that does make it 180 kilos heavier than a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo that I weighed the other day. I wasn't really expecting that. Yes, now drive modes I'm in tour at the moment and if I just flick up on this there you go I can go to sport sport I can feel the seat doing strange things it sort of tries to pinch you the bolsters come up and uh, yeah it has a, yeah, a stiffer ride quality as well so let's just try it down here I feel like I should be changing down but you can't turn in I can feel oh yes yeah, traction limited again <sighs> individual actually that is basically sports setting without the harder suspension it lowers it, uh, this car will lower the suspension and just toughen up the dampers but in individual I've taken that element out and bumpy bit of road it goes down here pretty well the, the, the difference there is is just a connectivity this is the little bit of Lotus genes that has come through and you do feel connected with this car. The steering feels good, it feels sharp, and it feels sporting. And the ride is sort of sporting, but not excessively so. It's, I don't know how to describe it, it just feels sorted, when quite often you get in these cars and they do not feel sorted. But you can tell that some clever chassis engineers have been at work with this car, and it's quite fun to punt around but it is quite a big thing as well but uh, yeah i think again a bit like the dbx there's a lot of wheel travel and a lot of work has gone how it behaves a down road like this a little bit more testing down here see how it absorbs this bump I mean the weight, yeah, I mean, it feels low down, rolls well controlled, there's no rear steer on this example, it is an option. Yeah, you can make very quick progress down a road like this. The, I mean it's four and a half seconds to 60 this car, but it, it's almost that it's starring turn is actually mid-range punch off the line. I don't know if they talk limited, but it doesn't have the absolute wallop that I expected from the 605 horsepower headline thing. With the R version, they get a two-speed gearbox and it has a lower gear for the rear motor setup and that gives it sparkling off the line performance and they dip under three seconds 0.62 thanks to that uh, extra gear. But this has a top speed of 160 miles an hour, so it's a single speed and takes you naught all the way to 160 slightly blunts it on the traffic light Grand Prix if that matters.
Yeah, likes and dislikes for this car. I think I'm going to go in early because there's a particular thing I want to discuss. So, yeah, dislikes, size, it's a positive or a negative. As a family car, I've got loads of space inside. As I saw that sporting Lotus, I do feel its size and I particularly feel its weight. I've had ABS trigger when I don't expect it to coming into corners on damp conditions. Um, you're just trying to slow down a very big mass. Nothing wrong with the brakes, but traction is just how much grip you actually have to control the mass. Same on traction out of the corner. It's, it's using everything it can. And sometimes on a corner I've just noticed Oh, there's a lot of mass here. This would like get through the hedge if I don't concentrate here. And if I turn everything off, I'm not sure if you can. You might be able to do that. I have not delved into that. Yeah, you see there, I'm feeling the mass through there. Break into there, a little bit of ABS into there. Slip, slip. Oh, yeah. And yeah, just again out of there. <sighs> yeah, it's it. You have to be a fully aware that there is nearly two point six tons you're taking around these corners just there I can just yeah, I can just trigger it again right I'm going to discuss my particular dislike with this car and it's come as a surprise and it's all to do with range and the efficiency and how far it travels on one kilowatt hour of electricity, which is my benchmark. And it's not good. And I, it's weird, this one, because it's a great big battery on it. It's a 112 kilowatt hour battery in this. So Taycan gets 93. So you expect the range to be right up there. They actually quote, I think it's 375 mile range on this. It's nowhere near that. I was a little shocked coming away from Hefford, it's a 150 mile journey, and it just used more than I expected. So I've been taking a closer interest at the actual range this car does, and a journey, for example, yesterday, I had to go into London and back 145 miles, and I put it into range just to absolutely maximize what, how far I could travel on the amount of electricity in the car. And I went there and back, never always at speed limits it's as smooth as I could make it and it did 2.16 miles per kilowatt hour that is not good it was eight degrees temperature I tested a take and in similar conditions back in October 22 admittedly it was 12 degrees and that did three miles per kilowatt hours and, and this was 2.16 I've had a worst case one charge where I was doing cornering shots on here, but we did other things, school runs, general roundabout. It did 1.62 miles per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. That's really poor. And it means that the usable range in this is not the quoted 375 miles. At maximum, as far as in these conditions, it is December, it is cold. I am around the 220 mile range and I'm bitterly disappointed with that and you've got to remember if you were charging on the outdoor network at worst case that worst sort of one charge I did and driving it enthusiastically and you were paying 75p for a unit let's say on the outside charger that is equivalent to about 13.7 mpg that would be the cost to you charge at home it's around the 35 mpg equivalent cost to run this car but yeah a big disappointment fortunately there are likes with this car and number one i just freshness and the design and the modernity and this interior there's a massive feel-good factor with this car because it's yeah look at what lotus are doing and that bit i absolutely love about this car i also love the ride handling i feel as though i'm in a sort of sporting suv i don't feel as compromised as i do in others and they just don't engage and i'm just dry, driving an appliance i don't feel as though i'm driving an appliance with this car i'm driving something really quite fun and interesting and looks cool and feel good factor right up there um other things 
I think it's well priced. At home, I keep saying it's like a Yoris, this car. I compare it to a Yoris just from that design and street theatre. Taking it into London, it gets the looks, it gets has curbside appeal, this car. I mean, and it, it's the same sort of horsepower as Yoris. It's heavier than a Yoris, but it still gets a bit of a move on. So, and it's half the price of a base Yoris. So that is pretty cool as well. And just those chassis and engineers and their work they've done, really noticeable. So, conclusion on this car. Well, I desperately wanted to love it. I'm a buyer of Lotus and the price point and the big battery. But I couldn't live with that inefficiency. I'm absolutely gutted about it. And maybe I've been sort of hypnotised by that Mercedes I drove at the Mille Emilia. Because that was doing, where this car is struggling to do two miles per kilowatt hour, that car was doing nine. Huge difference. And that's going to be in production in 2025. So it just feels as though this might have an update. It's It's got to be better than that. A Taycan came out years ago and it can do three miles to kilowatt hour. It can go further on its smaller battery than this can. The other really annoying thing about the range is the range indicator is wildly out. Again, the trip into London yesterday, there and back, say 145 miles, uh, the range dropped by 196 miles during that journey. So it showed a, a, it was out by 51 miles. So it has a range indicator that you absolutely cannot trust. That number there, saying I've got a range of 120 miles on 39% battery, is baloney. It's probably got about 75 miles in it, not 120. And that's really annoying. So yeah, huge disappointment. It feels like it has the Lotus handling and everything this, but it's such a, a departure from what we use from uh, Lotus. It I, sort of reminds me of the Lotus Carton. This is like a Geely done by Lotus, that it has all the handling, all the attributes that you know from Lotus, but it's just a bigger, different car from Lotus that is really come from, from the Geely board and how they've done it. Yes, it's designed in Coventry, but all the engineering is in is in Germany, hasn't been anywhere near Heffel, and it, that is why it feels to me like a very different Lotus, a, a bit of a departure, but it's priced right and looks right, it's just that inefficiency. So there you go, there's my conclusion on the Lotus Electra. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, well keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon.